When you first run Wireshark, you'll get a startup screen like this. Let's click on the interface list. This is the list of network interfaces on your computer. Once you choose an interface, Wireshark will capture all packets on that interface. Let's choose Ethernet. Let's hit start. Now, packets are being captured on that Ethernet. Here we have the command menus, which are standard pull-down menus. This is the displayed filter specification. You can filter it by specific protocol types like HTTP, TCP, or UDP. This is the packet listening window. It contains a listing of all captured packets. You can see the packet source and destination addresses here. This is the packet header details window. It provides details about the packet you selected in the packet listening window. This is the packet content window. It displays the entire content of the captured frame in both ASCII and hexadecimal format. While Wireshark is running in the background, we're going to go to this URL and have the page displayed in our browser. In order to display this page, our browser will connect to the HTTP server at gaia.cs.umass.edu and exchange HTTP messages with the server in order to download this page. The Ethernet frames containing these HTTP messages, as well as all other frames passing through our Ethernet adapter, will be captured by Wireshark. Okay, let's stop Wireshark packet capture by clicking this. Let's type HTTP into the display filter specification window and hit apply. Now let's find HTTP get message that was sent from our computer to gaia.cs.umass.edu HTTP server. Notice that when we select the HTTP get message, the Ethernet frame, IP datagram, TCP segment, and HTTP message header information are displayed in packet header window. We can also expand on it and see that the maximum amount of protocol information for the HTTP. Well, that wraps it up for the basics of Wireshark. I'll provide additional information and training videos for those interested in learning more about it in the reference section.